What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you guys. Well, not really with the market watch today, but in a weird way, let's talk about the market anyway. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was going to do a totally different video. I was going to talk about, well, girl Yu-Gi-Oh players and guy Yu-Gi-Oh players and how there's so, such a massive difference and a massive disconnect and how Konami decided it was a good idea to show this round one, which was just absolutely atrocious idea, but... Uh, maybe I'll do that for another video. If you want to see that video, comment down below. But what I want to do today, what I want to talk about today is tier zero formats and why they're not healthy. Now, let me preface this entire video by saying I have a Shichu Tielements. I like the deck a lot. I think Shichu Tielements are a great deck. Um, I enjoy playing the Shichu Tielements mirror match. I really do. It's fun to me. With that said, as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, and I, I'm not sure if this happened to me only or, or maybe at different times, different players. But I know how to take myself back from the game and look at the game as a whole. And I understand the fact that there are not Yu-Gi-Oh players out there who are playing Ishizus. Like, and Telemans, obviously. Like, I know, I know that's not a thing. And there's other players out there who, let's say, is playing like Heroes or Cyber Dragons or Sky Strikers. Uh, Eldic players. Like, they want to play their decks and have fun too. They want to be competitive. But unfortunately, the meta requires you to play this deck or some other decks that we'll talk about in a second. So, our tier, zero our tier zero format's really good for the game. You asked anybody about this a couple of months ago, they would have told you, of course not. It's not good for the game. Anyone saying it is, is lying. You ask people today that own tier elements, they're going to tell you, oh no, it's great for the game. Tier elements are amazing. In fact, I love tier zero formats. Well, the truth is, it's not good for the game. The only reason they're saying that is because they're over leveraged and how much money they put in their tier element deck. Once you realize that, you done that, well, then you're a little bit biased. Now, once again, I, I bought the tier limits. I have all the cards. It's not, it's not fully maxed already, but it's pretty up there. I'll probably show my profile on this channel soon. And I still, still think that tier limits are, well, I'm saying good for the game itself, but the meta isn't. We're in a really bad spot as Yu-Gi-Oh plays. And, and, and unless, you're, unless you're not playing tier limits, you have zero idea. A meta in which a majority of the top decks are one deck is terrible. Spirals was pretty bad. Dragon Rulers was pretty bad. And some of you have the balls to say tier limits are good. They're not. Now, once again, I want to emphasize this. I do think tier limits take a lot of skill to play. I think the mirror match is insanely skillful as well. 100%. But once again, you have to understand that you're forced to play this deck. You're forced to buy these expensive cards and put them together in a deck. Anyone saying no, anyone saying you can play whatever you want is full of shit. Anyone. There are caveats, though. There are decks like uh, Sprites, and, and, and there are decks like Thunderies. I'll talk about that in a second. I want to put that to the side for now. But for the most part, Tier 0 means this is the most dominant deck in the room. And I think we can all agree, Tier Elements have a massive dominance in the room. Simple. Um, with that said... Uh, what are we going to do about this? Well, not really nothing. There's nothing we really can do. The cards that stop tier limits are still not as good. The cards that slow the deck down don't really do much. Or Shattering Event is a spell card. And that card doesn't do much against tier limits if they get to go first. They're going to do whatever they want. And I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are starting to realize this. That there is a problem. Now, once again, not every Yu-Gi-Oh player. Because there are ones that bought the deck and are dick riding it. But Yu-Gi-Oh players aren't stupid. They're sitting there going, hey, man. I'm a striker guy. I got my OT uh, uh, rays, but I can't even use them because I'm going to get smoked by the meta. Oh, hey, man, I'm playing Lich, but it doesn't matter because my turn one's going to get blasted by a tier player. Like, there are huge issues in this game. And I think Yu Gi Oh players need to slowly just take a step back because I've talked to a lot of people that said it's good that we're in a tier zero meta. And that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. It's not good. It's not healthy. Those who say it own this deck. If you don't own this deck, then come at me and tell me. But once again, people aren't going to because they want to play what they want to play. Now, a great meta has a diverse amount of decks, at least two to three minimal. If there was another deck to combat tier limits consistently, that would be the deck. And you might go, wait a minute, V, I got you. We got Flunderies. Sure, Flunderies are really good against tier limits, but Flunderies lose themselves, number one. Number two, Flunderies still has bad matchups. They just do. And number three, Flunderies is a consistent as we saw in YCS Pasadena, where Flunderies were in the finals, they made it a top cut, but that's really it. So you're forcing your players to play Flunderies and Telemans. 
And then you might go, wait a minute, V, but what else sprites? All right, get your wallet ready. Now, this game's been a game of always you spend money to buy the cards. This game's heavily about money, but sprites are still expensive for a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players that don't own sprites. And Flunderies is their only uh, only chance of playing a cheaper deck, if you have the Prosperities, of course, but cheaper deck that you have to deal, that you have to go and comp as a meta with. But that's it. That We're, we're done. Just close the door on that. Everything else is going to lose to these three decks. And realistically, everything loses in time to tier limits. That's kind of wild if you think about it. So, now that we understand that we're in a tier zero meta, and now we understand how unhealthy this is, I I'm not even going to make the argument for Maxi, even though if Maxi existed, this would, the top cut would be tremendously different. But I'm going to say that we need more cards to combat a tier zero meta, unhealthy meta. We need cards that are going to allow players to combat decks like tier limits. Because it is the best deck in the room. No doubt in my mind. I don't think nobody's going to ever argue that. So, <coughs> the thing I want to get across in this video is, is tier limits skillful? Yes, absolutely. Is it tier zero? You damn right it is. Is that good? Fuck no, it's not. Anyone saying it's good? Probably owns tier limits. Ask them, ask them, anyone who says tier limit, this, this is okay, what's happening? Just say, hey kid, how much do you spend your fucking field spells? Because you own it, obviously. And, and, and you get a place where, like, get insanely biased. But once you, in my position where, like, you have these, all these decks, you realize this is not good. Because you understand, not everyone wants to play this fucking deck. People want to play other cards. And that's the issue we have here. People want to play other cards, other decks that are good, by the way. Be still Dragonlink is an insanely good deck. Did it win the event? Fuck no, it didn't. Hey, it, it, it showed some pretty cool stuff. And the guy that won um, this YCS recently played a bunch of B-Steals. In tier limits. <laughs> like, you see a pattern here? Basically, what I'm trying to say is the fact that, like, this is kind of, this is, this is meta is kind of insane because it's in a box. And I don't hate it. I, I like the meta myself personally, but for a lot of players out there, I get, I understand why you do. If you want to say, hey, V, I don't like this meta, I get it. I get it more than all those other liars who are going to lie to you. Like, they're going to say, like, oh, no, this meta is great as they shuffle their Telemans cards. No, it's a good meta. I'm having a good time because Telemans itself is a really fun deck. But once again, it's expensive. It's very expensive. Um, and you're forced to, like, buy the new cards. You're forced to buy a lot of new cards. Um, how, Paralina. What can I spell that name right? Planet. Pair. There it is. Um, you're forced to buy. You got to buy three of these field spells. You have to. Not maybe. Not kind of. Not, well, you have to. Now, lucky for a lot of you players, as we predicted a long time ago on this channel, the price of Primal Planet Paralina is going down. It's roughly around 74 bucks. It used to be around 100 Stabilized around 90, went down to 80, it's at 73. And the deck just won a YCS. So this is a great sign for a lot of you guys out there who are looking to get par uh, uh, Prime, Prime Evil Planet Paralino. Doesn't mean the meta's not bad, it is. But you still have a chance. It's a little less expensive. Still expensive to, to a lot of players. Now, obviously you play this game because you want to hear about real world events, but the economy's kind of trash. <coughs> the price of bacon is like double. I, I, bacon used to be like four dollars. Now bacon's like ten dollars. Like it's insane. Like everything's prices have moved so quickly, and with this within the span of like two years. So what I'm trying to say is, you probably don't have enough money to put in this game, but you still want to get that value from this game. And the current meta doesn't allow you to get that value, which only hurts the game, by the way. Anyone defending the fact that this meta is a good meta realizes the, doesn't realize the fact. That this hurts the game for a lot of players who can't really play and be competitive because of, well, the economy's kind of going kaput. <laughs> the, the value of everything. Unless you live with mommy and daddy. You got, you got your mommy and daddy guys still. Live with mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy got the butt cheeks. And they buy you, you know, uh, a toilet paper and, and, they, and, and they, they buy bacon and all that stuff. Then I guess the, no big deal. Ignore this entire video. You're, you're right. I can't argue with somebody whose mom and dad pays their bills. I'm sorry. But, but, but when you realize the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! Playbase is getting more mature in time, and as that Playbase gets more mature in time, you're going to get a lot of dudes that are going to move out and get their own life and pay their own bills like grown men. What you're going to see, what you're going to see is dudes that go, bro, I already have a certain amount of money to put up in this game, and now you're selling me $75 field spells that I got to buy on top of everything else with the newest set of and babies. Buy all that stuff. I got to buy all that shit? Come on, Konami. Let me breathe. Just get them have the Konami. I ain't dropping that kind of money. So that's my issue. And you got players that have good decks. Once again, like B Still Dragonly is an insanely good deck. That deck has no that deck should definitely be a tier one. 
and it technically is, but when you have a tier zero deck, tier ones mean nothing. It's almost the same like in any regular format where we have like tier one decks, and you look at all the tier two decks, you know, maybe one of those might top an event, maybe they might even win it. That'd be exciting. Realistically, that tier one slot, that's the winners. Tier two is the I wish I coulds. And right now, it's the same thing, but we just moved it up a rank. Where tier ones are the I wish I coulds, and the tier zero is tier elements, which is the winners. That's why a tier zero format's terrible. Another argument is um, that I had with a buddy of mine is, is tier elements a combo deck, or is it a control deck? And I think a lot of players get stumped on this because they'll, they'll, you right now probably people watching this video are probably making an answer control or they're saying combo, but you're, I think you're both wrong. I think this is a hybrid deck, and every time we, we've had these decks in the past, but these aren't really good for the game as well. And you, uh, deck like Alter Guys, you can't say hey V Alter Guys, that's a mid range deck. No, it's it's a control deck. Like it wants to control the board state. That's I mean, that's when it's happiest. Um, you can't look at a deck like Tillman and say this is a combo deck because yeah maybe maybe turn one matters but if you shifted this deck and it, and they pass they can still beat your ass in so you can't say it's fully combo right because if it can't act on turn one most combo decks die ask any Dragon Link player they'll tell you they'll tell you very easily but you can't say it's a mid range deck even though it does mid range stuff because turn one does matter if it gets a good turn one in you're not gonna see it mid game. So that's why I say Tillamance is more of a hybrid deck. And that's a problem because when you have a hybrid deck, you get players that choose either or 100% get screwed always. If you're playing a, a, a combo deck against Tillamance and they beast you and you pass her on a crappy board, they get to go full combo and kill you. Or let's say you're, in, you're, you're going to mid game state with beast deals and you're playing Dragon Link and we're in turn three, they're pro uh, beast deal uh, Tillamance, they're probably going to outpace you because that's the way the deck is designed. So you were in a really lose-lose situation against a really good deck in this game. Obviously, the easy answer is say, V, get the shotgun out, let's start banning things, or shoot like all these decks and cards. Um, the problem with that is it only proves the fact that Konami uh, printed an over overpowered uh, archetype. And really rarely, Konami hits an overpowered archetype. It's insanely rare. Like, insanely rare. It's like how many hits for, dragon, for dragons, the dragon rulers, to actually calm down. Like, they were still doing shit. It was wild. So Konami's not going to hit this deck entirely to kill it. Konami's not going to try to hit this deck to make it tier 1 so it can compete with other decks. And I do think, ultimately, Maxi would be the answer. But that's, once again, I'm not going to get in an argument. There's a lot of you players who think Maxi would never come back because they're dumbasses. Because they're fine with this in insanely terrible meta. I'm still going to have fun in this meta. I still enjoy this meta. I, I love tier elements. I love sprites. I, I love uh, fun. The reason why I love these decks, it's really fun for me. But once again, I understand that a lot of you players that don't own these cards, but still want to be competitive, that own everything else. Be still Dragon is the only that comes to mind, but I know there's other decks um, that want to get involved, want to compete. They're having a tough time. And of course they're having a tough time because we're in a really degenerate meta that doesn't allow them to play, even though their decks are insanely good still. Because Tillamish are just that much better of a deck. Um, listen, let me know if I'm right or wrong on this one. I really want to know because I per this is what I think. And what I do is normally when I make these videos, the only reason I make these videos, by the way, is, well, I think YouTube gives me like 20 bucks, I think a video, roughly, 15, 20 bucks. But the only reason I really like making these videos is because I want to see what you guys have to say. Because I want to see if it's the, the, the known sentiment that we're in a tier zero meta, that it's not good for the game. Whether you like the decks or not, it doesn't matter, because if it's not good for the game, it's going to hurt the player base, which is obviously going to hurt the game. So if you care about the game more than yourself, which I think every you can play should care about the game more themselves because that's how the game continues. Then you have to understand, well, what are we going to do about this? I'm not saying for you not to go to locals or T-Elements. Fuck no. You go, you go and you bring the best thing in the game. That's why I say with players don't play Mystic Mind. I don't like it. I, I understand it, though. I have no problems against players playing Mystic Mind. I have problems against Konami for not fixing it. Uh, same thing with this current meta. Like, Konami, had you been big boys and girls over there, Konami, and maybe actually go to three... We wouldn't be in the predicament we're in right now. Decks like Sky Strikers with the recent Sky Striker support would probably have topped this event. If not even won it, which is kind of wild if you think about it. But it's not going to happen because you just were like, oh no, I'm scared. I don't, you don't want Max C over here. Cool. Enjoy Tier Zero. This is not good for the game. 
once again, like I said, I, the reason I do this video is because I want that feedback from you guys. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Am I overreaching in this? Is this game great? Are you having a fun time playing uh, fill in the blank dot deck? And if you are playing tier limits, seriously, can you at least level with me and go, yeah, this isn't healthy. Like, can you use, or are you going to be like, no, this is really healthy. I do play tier limits. I think this is a great that the deck I play is the best deck in the house. And everyone else's deck is just getting pounded left and right. This is healthy as hell. Like, let me know because I want to know. I, I want to know, like, do we have a bunch of, like, blind biased Yu-Gi-Oh players? Or do we have players that are like, yeah, this is really kind of fucked up. Like, I played in Spiral Meta. I played Spirals in Spiral Meta. Doesn't mean the deck wasn't bad, like, it was OP. I played Dragon Links in that meta. We all knew back then. We're like, this shit is not healthy. And we just kept playing because we all knew it was bad. Like, can we all agree that this is just, like, super bad for the game? But I do enjoy playing tier limits. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, like I enjoy playing tier limits. I love playing in match. I love playing tier limit matches. And this is why you go play this complain night about the tier limits because it's really fun. But not everybody owns this fucking deck because it's so expensive. Especially with the beasts. Especially with the Shizu cards. Especially with all the tier limit cards. And then you got to add all the tech choices. Like, it's insanely expensive. And, of course... It, it, it's it's something that well if you're not playing this deck you're playing an uphill battle that you're probably not gonna have a good time with anyway puts on i really appreciate you guys watching my videos make sure that like button subscribe button comment down below it's your boy v and you plan to have a great day